Hello there YouTube friends and subscribers. It's uh, January here in Great Britain and uh, the, virtually the coldest month of the year but it won't be long before the wild birds start thinking about nesting and uh, what we're going to do today is see if we can uh, build a simple bird nesting box that will suit blue tits and great tits. So the first thing we're going to do is get ourselves some suitable timber now this thing here is a piece of what we call um, a gravel board. It's left over from a fence I did. It's about six feet long. Um, I don't know, what's that, six inches wide and nearly an inch thick. That, you get that from uh, the big sheds. Probably Wix will sell you that for five pounds. I'll be working with simple DIY tools here. And <clears throat> What I thought we would do is just come up with a design. So the side of our, what we're gonna do is have a, a box with a sloping roof. So what I thought we would do is perhaps have it a foot long on the longest side. <clears throat> Something there, using this old fashioned tape measure, which is even in inches, look at that. Um, and perhaps say 10 inches this side. So that'll give a reasonable slope. Just use the edge of the saw to create that slope. You see that? I'll just mark that up using the edge of the saw. Now, obviously, if you've got a sharp pencil, that helps. And uh, what we're going to do, if we do that cut across there, that will give us we'll end up with both uh, sides of our new bird nesting accommodation. Now what I'm going to do now is go and resharpen my pencil. Right there we are, we've resharpened our nice orange pencil. Obviously if you've got a different colour pencil that would be just as acceptable. So I'll just mark the line. There's no need to go nuts, you're not using the pencil to cut the timber, you're using it to mark it. So we'll see if we can neatly saw this off with our rather blunt saw. It's a no-name saw, so uh, all DIY stuff here. Because if you could afford a Stanley saw, that would probably be good. Yeah, this is a, definitely an old blunt saw. Oof. Yeah. Now, what you don't want is a very blunt saw. In fact, this saw is so crap, I'm gonna go and see if I can find another one. Ah, now here we are. Now we've got a decent saw. This is uh, known as an Irwin Course Jack Saw. Other names are available. I think this came from B&Q and uh, two for nine pounds or something. Let's have another go, shall we? Oh yes. I'll be quite honest, I think. Yeah. The, the wood's a bit damp. I think that's probably what uh, is causing that other little saw to not work. Right, so um, that's going to be the side of our bird box. So we want two identical pieces to that. So we will mark that across this end now. And that, just check to see if that is roughly square. Yes it is. So we'll quickly take this off. Always draw backwards to start sawing. Keep your fingers out of the way. And then saw meat along that line. There we are. Right. So we've got two sides now. So that's how that's going to look. Uh, right, so if we 
if our two sides are going to go on there like that we'll call this the top shall we most mark that with a T um, let's see what I would like to do is have a box with the the back of it will extend beyond the little house we're building so we'll leave about a couple of inches at the top here and a couple of inches at the bottom and that will help us when we come to fixing the thing so we could right we'll mark that up now let's give ourselves this thing of two inches there and then we'll have the side of the box and then we'll come two inches down from that as well so that is going to be our longest piece of timber on the whole job so we could cut that off now if you haven't got a square just use this edge of the saw and that's a 45 and that's a 90 it's not massively accurate but it'll get you out of trouble if you haven't got a lot of kit mark it nicely and then just cut that off carefully draw back to start Because this timber's been um, treated, it's still a bit wet around the edges. Can you see that? And that's why the saw's binding. Right. So what we've got now is a back and two sides. So we will need a front. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting because when we make the front, Let's just put that there. When we make the front, what we want is, because the, the roof's gonna go like this, let me see. So the front will actually want to be at that same angle there, that top cut. So what we would do to achieve that, Let's just put that down there and to make sure we get the same cut I'm putting that on there and using the old knee department I'm going to mark that like that and I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can so that when we cut that piece that will <laughs> that line should extend down like that I hope I make myself clear. Right, so what we would do now is mark this again as a, a straight across, neatly. This is where we're gonna start getting in, it's gonna get interesting. What do you mean it's not interesting already? Right, now we come to where a little bit of skill is going to be required and that is to cut down that line there now nobody said we were experts but we're, we're definitely going to have a go and bearing in mind the woods damp as well right this is going to be a laugh isn't it guys let's do it live anyway so that's part of the fun of it cutting here on the slope go steady there's no need to rush it just make sure it's, it's easy to do it slowly properly than have six different goes at it just let the saw do the work what we've achieved there is that angle cut which 
hopefully we'll so let's just see what was that bit that was going to be the um, it's always useful if you've got a decent stool to work on I mean some people have black and decker workmates I've never owned one of those um, in actual fact that's going to be the same cut at the top isn't it like that I suppose we could do that do you think it's worth nailing these bits up now so that we can actually see what we've got so we're not just working to a load of loose pieces okay that's agreed so what we're going to do is turn this over and then attempt to nail these pieces together okay guys we're doing it live um, what I found is um, ideally it's nice if you can get some of these um, galvanized uh, sort of felt nails I think I think they're called clouts galvanized clouts now these are about an inch long probably not quite man enough for this you just about hold it together um, I've just found these kicking around in the garage, on the floor in the garage, waiting for somebody to drive over, no doubt. Um, so what we're going, to, this is, let's see. Yeah, that's how that's going to look. That, that will be the back. So what we're going to do is nail through the back of the, uh, the bird box. Now, where's my pants? We've we've marked across it so we we know where we're working to so if we put our nails right this is the top and this is the bottom so we can nail it say here here and here on both sides so what I'm going to do is get the nails started at ground level here Try and get them nice and straight, guys. Then they won't come out the sides. Now what I'm gonna do is transfer those lines across. So we get our nails in the right place. Nice and neat and tidy. Right. So it's there and there. So we'll put some nails in this side. I can see we're not going to have anywhere near enough nails. This is real DIY work, isn't it? Doing it on, your, on the floor of, of your driveway. Right. Now, see what we're doing, guys. I hope, hope you can still see this. If I was a carpenter, you were a lady. Right, that's one side. It's easy enough isn't it guys nothing complicated about doing this whatsoever so we get that about there that looks somewhere handy yeah well it's not exactly a Chippendale right we've only got a few nails left so when we come to while you're down there this is how the front's gonna the, uh, sorry the roof's gonna go on um let's just see now right while we're working down here what i'm gonna do is suggest right uh, 
let's see that's going to go on there like that isn't it so what we might do now if you can still see what I'm doing okay this is the front we know that's going to fit roughly speaking it is only a bird nesting box um, what I'm going to do is let that overhang a little bit instead of finishing it flush I'm going to let it overhang and because I believe it'll make it more difficult for any predators to get up close to the front of the box I'm going to have that off there I think so this would be the front uh, and I'll put a little T there as if in case we forget what we're doing now I'm going to cut this off and then we'll fix I'm going to cut it off here and then we're going to fix this to the front of our box now we will what have we got we've got uh, we've got six nails left right, let's just make sure that's nicely on there and it's something's not 100% perfect guys I don't mind admitting it but I think we can split the difference so let's just make a start here and get another nail in the bottom here somewhere Just put a couple in to start with since we're so short of nails. Right, beginning to take shape a little bit. Now, what we want to do now is cut a piece for the top, which is going to be that same angle again, here. Right, well that's cut. See that angle there? So that goes on the top of that, that's our little roof not exactly a perfect fit why is that that's because we're not using proper tools and we're DIYers right that overhang what do you think is that a bit too too much of an overhang there for the birds keep the rain off them we're gonna cut a hole here maybe should we leave it like that or shorten it a little bit Maybe we'll shorten it a tiny bit, shall we? Let's take about an inch off it. So, we'll do that and then we're gonna figure out how to do the bottom. I've got a feeling that may not have recorded, but you can see what I've done here. I've just used four nails into the top, into the roof. Uh, the least amount of times you penetrate the roof, probably the longer the box will last. And that just leaves the bottom to do now with our last piece of timber that we've got here. Now, I suppose if you felt lazy, you could just fit it in there like that and, ha and hack it off across here. I was thinking, my plan was that it would fit it in between there. Uh, we'd cut it in inside that hole. Um, don't know whether that is the best idea it would save this end grain being exposed perhaps I'm going to do that so I'm going to mark that in and we're going to see if we can cut it into the hole why do it the easy way right so that is going to want to be cut about there at that end and I mark it like this, this way, just using my eye. And we'll put a little mark on there for F, for front. 
I will check it for square to see if we're roughly on track using this rough and ready method it's not perfect okay we can get another go at this if we get it completely wrong let's just double check it that way it's pretty good so when, when we've cut that that piece should fit in there absolutely beautifully so I'm going to cut that across this line now okay well I've cut it now whether it's going to go in or not of course will be rather interesting let's just try shall we too bad so what I want to do now is quickly get a nail in each side so the bottom don't drop out of it as we say so I'll use one of these long nails and hopefully we get it about right okay another long one in somewhere about there okay we know it's not going to fall out now here's another long nail we don't want the floor dropping out of the bed habitation do we right right guys this is our nesting box brilliant just there a bit of a gape well it's not a gaping hole at all but it's just uh, not as pretty as it could be uh, as you can, hopefully you can see that just to prove that we're not absolutely perfect around here so here's our nesting box now all we need to do now you might have noticed this one little problem at the moment and that is he doesn't got a front door so what we're going to have to do is get the drill out and see if we can cut a hole in the front there now this is probably the only DIY tool which is not going to be in everybody's toolkit but I actually bought uh, a, a, a thing very similar I'm sure I got it in in um, Poundland or somewhere it was pretty cheap and nasty but it definitely did a job uh, but this is not that kit this is a this is a better quality one I think I bought this donkeys years ago you, you get a whole selection of these little circular sorry there we are these circular blades and they fit into um, the slots in here so, somehow there we are I'll leave some links below this uh, video in the in the see more of, of where you get this sort of kit from now it does require an electric drill and I'm sure most people have got one of those in their kit bag right so now ideally that wants to be no bigger than a 50 pence piece that would be about your right size and that in this case is the, the very smallest the very smallest hole so the, the front door to your new bird accommodation wants to be a 50 pence piece approximately in size now as long as we've got enough juice in our drill we should be able to cut a hole in here I'm going to cut it a Mo what's that two-thirds of the way up now these blue tits they do love to get in the nest and then they'll fill the nest up to about here with moss and stuff so they can easily jump up to the hole they they don't mind how deep it is so they'll fill that all up with whatever they can find 
So I'm going to try and cut that about there. You can see what we're doing guys. As long as we've got enough battery, we'll get that through in the end. That hole is plenty big enough there. Okay. Access all areas. Right, that's plenty big enough actually. You'd, if you make your hole too big, predators can get in. I don't know what quite what predators, but sparrows will probably go in there if you're not careful. That is actually the size of a for a great tit. I can measure that hole if I can find that tape measure. And I would say it would have been it wouldn't have been a problem to have made it actually smaller. That is an inch and a quarter, which is what's that? 32 mil or something. Yeah. Don't don't make your hole any bigger than that. Right. Now what I might do now is just drill a couple of holes in the in the fixing positions which we've left for ourselves along the bottom here and along the top and uh, our nesting box is done. Thanks for watching everyone what we've done is created a nesting box for great tits using uh, DIY tools mostly and uh, cheap materials. Um, this would probably suit a, a great tit or blue tits and by fixing one of these up on the side of your house you're supporting that particular kind of wild bird which makes the garden so much more interesting and uh, it's important I think to keep these birds going for the sake of just a cheap little nesting box. Um, thanks for watching perhaps you can leave your comments below I should certainly leave some uh, links to where we've got the tools from and the materials and perhaps you can tell me how you would have done your nesting box and uh, what uh, other wild nesting boxes you've thought of doing also in your back garden if you'd like to subscribe to my channel guys that'd be really good and uh, thanks for watching